Hello, my name is Amanda Williams, and I'm an education specialist with the nursing and patient education team here at Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center. Today, I will be going over alarm management for critical care areas. We'll take a look at our policy and your responsibility while monitoring these patients. First, we will go over our policy and how it pertains to patient care. All alarms on the monitor must be turned on and audible for every patient. Our bedside monitor should always be set at a minimum of four or 40%, and central monitors should be set at a minimum of six or 60%. Heart rate alarm parameters should be set accordingly. High alarm at 120 beats per minute or 30 points higher than the patient's baseline, and a low alarm of 50 beats per minute or 15 to 20 points slower than the patient's baseline. These alarm limits may be extended when a patient is ambulating. Arrhythmia alarms will alarm as such. Crisis alarms. They will display as red alarms and sound accordingly. They include rhythms such as asystole, ventricular fibrillation, and sustained ventricular tachycardia. Warning alarms will display as a yellow alarm and sound accordingly and include non-sustained ventricular tachycardia, ventricular bradycardia, accelerated ventricular bradycardia, and pauses. Advisory alarms will display yellow alert and alarm accordingly. These include ventricular couplets, bigeminy, trigeminy, tachycardia, and bradycardia. Message alerts will display yellow and alarm accordingly and include PVCs or premature ventricular contractions and irregular rhythms. ST segment alarms should be set at plus or minus two millimeters above and plus or minus two millimeters below the patient's baseline. Regarding continuous pulse oximetry, Patient's low limit should be 5% less than baseline saturations. For example, if patient's baseline O2 saturation is 99%, the low limit would need to be set at 94%. Blood pressure alarms must also be patient-specific and be set at the order by low limits per physician order. Systolic, diastolic, and MAP alarms should all be on and audible at all times. All other vital signs such as pulmonary artery pressure, central venous pressure, or respirations, to name a few, should all be audible and parameters set based on physician order. It is the responsibility of the RN to assess that all alarms are on and audible, as well as make sure the alarm parameters are set accordingly for each patient for each vital sign at bedside shift report. It is also the responsibility of the RN to respond to all alarms and assess the patient first. The following vital signs must be documented at minimum every two hours in a critical care setting unless otherwise ordered more frequently or less frequently. Blood pressure, respirations, heart rate, and oxygen saturation. Temperature, unless being monitored continuously, must be checked and documented every four hours at minimum. The provider must be notified in these instances. Patient refusing monitoring, vital signs out of order to set parameters, any new alarms or patient symptomatic with vital signs inside those parameters. In the event the EMR is down, charting will be done on the downtime forms. In conclusion, management of monitoring alarms, including audibility, correct alarm parameters, and the patient's condition while being monitored all fall under the responsibility of the RN. Immediate assessment of patient when alarms are sounded are required, as well as provider notification of change in status. Diligent management of patient alarms will greatly increase our culture of safety, patient satisfaction, and patient care.